What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Basic Blues Podcast. Right here on YouTube, I'm your host, Morgan Chapman. And I'll jump right into it tonight, folks. We have a very special guest joining me. This is Javen Williams, uh, Penn State commit, five-star recruit, man, the class of 2023. Javen, thank you so much for uh, joining me tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Let's let's just jump into – before we jump into the football side of it, let's jump into you as a person. Outside of football, what do you like to do? You know, What are your hobbies, interests, stuff like that when you're not on the football field? I'm sure – a lot of people kind of want to know you more as a person versus you as the player right now. Um, I'm, I'm like a normal teenage kid. I love to play video games with my buddies and stuff and just hang around my friends and family and just, you know, be around like my inner circle, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly how, you know, most 18, 17, 18 year olds are. So I figured that was as such, um, you know, you're going into your senior year of, uh, of high school. You're obviously a division one commit. You had a ton of offers, a ton of hype around your recruitment process. Um, you know, something when I was going, when I was in high school and, and coaches would always ask my teammates and stuff like that, like what wakes you up in the morning, right? What is your, why, what, do, what drives you on? You already have committed to Penn state. What's going to motivate you to one, obviously go through your senior year of football and play at a high level, but two, what motivates you to, to keep going to the next level and obviously uh, keep getting better each day? Well, um, as far as like for my senior year, um, I'm doing it for my team and, and you know, my community, uh, we've been to States twice and we lost both years. So I'm really hoping, you know, and I'm grinding and making sure that this year we get to States and we, we have a, a different result and uh, Penn state and, and uh, beyond. Uh, I want to uh, retire my parents. Uh, I want to, you know, put them in a great position, you know, give them a whole bunch of money and, and just be able to take care of myself. So that's really my, uh, my goal as far as, you know, making it to the NFL and making a whole bunch of money. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I can't imagine the feeling to be able to, to deliver on that dream for your parents and for your loved ones. So obviously uh, you're headed in the right direction so far. So very interesting stuff. Um, you know, obviously in July, a lot of new faces have committed to Penn State, part of your uh, future teammates. Let's go back to your commitment day in February. I, I, I know this, like when, when kids commit, the biggest thing is the tweet or the video or the live stream, but you as a player, what was that day like? Is it like Christmas morning? Because you obviously you know the decision you're going to make. Um, you basically have to hold this big secret all day. And, uh, I mean, was it hard to sleep the night before? What was that commitment day like for you? Well, for me, I didn't know I was going to commit the day I committed. Um, I was going to visit a couple more schools just to see uh, just see other facilities. But I knew, like, what was home for me, and I knew that Penn State was the best option. Uh, that morning, uh, me – uh, my teammate, Payson Ziegler, and uh, Ross Tucker, a uh, famous alumni from my school, my coach, we went to the weight room and we just uh, worked on past sets because we don't run a lot in our offense. So I want to, you know, get as much work in as I can. So we were just working out that morning. And then um, me, my, my dad, my coach, I have a really strong relationship, Coach O'Neill and Ross Tucker. We went to go out, eat breakfast. And um, uh, he he's like a, a expert on that stuff. He, he runs a recruiting business. So, like, he knows – more about that stuff than I would. So it was great having him as a source. And he kind of laid out the pros and cons for me that day. And after leaving, I already knew, like, I wanted to commit. And I just called the coaches and I let them know what I wanted to do. Yeah. What was, um, you know, when you did make that decision, how much of an impact did going and seeing the campus in person have on you? Because, you know, during COVID and all that stuff, when when recruits were not able to go on campus, I think I thought that that had a pretty big impact when it's just Zoom calls and I know I heard an interview you did with Rivals, and you're talking about the relationship that not only Coach Franklin had with you, but the trust and love that he showed your family. I mean, how important was it for you to see the campus and also see that in-person interaction with your with your parents and loved ones? Um, well, I, I got invited to Penn State, the Penn State versus Villanova game, and that's the day I got offered. Um, and I almost committed leaving that day. Like, I just got offered. I love Penn State. I grew up kind of like – I'm surrounded by Penn State. You know, I'm in Eastern PA, so, like, my neighbors, my teammates, my, my friends, they, you know, they all love Penn State. So um, that would that just, like, that kind of sets a tone off with the school, just like Penn State. And and then, like, they just showed my parents and, and like, my family, my siblings, like, they kind of, like, kind of like they were like me. Uh, they showed them with a whole bunch of respect. And it was just, like, an easy decision. That, like, I felt like they were family. They treated me, like, I would be their kid. And I knew that it was a whole bunch of trust and respect in our relationships. That's awesome, man. It's like the number one thing when you 
go to college and you're away from your family, you want to still be treated as family. You still want that kind of surrounding because it's, it's just different. You know, when, once you get to college and obviously you start to experience different things and go through hardships or whatever, if it's on the football field or in the classroom, you still want to be surrounded by good people that care about you and that are looking, looking out for your best interest. So I'm, I'm, I'm it's awesome to hear that, uh, that that much of it has an impact on your uh, decision to, to go to Penn state. And that's the feelings that you got when you were there. Um, yeah. You know, watching your film, uh, your high school film, your offense is a little unconventional. You know, you guys run like the academy kind of uh, wing T style offense, which whenever we played those schools in high school, whenever I get off the bus, knowing we have to play a wing T, it's like I'm already annoyed. You know, I don't I'm going to get you know cut down or someone's going to run over my knees and stuff like how, how cool is that offense to run to run to learn? I, I've seen you. Obviously, you're you're lined up all over the field. But how much fun is that offense to run uh, when you're in it? Um, it's awesome. Uh, I originated uh, at Westchester uh, University, so like my all of my coaches went to Westchester, um, and uh, one of my coaches, his father, actually created our offense. So our coaches know what they're talking about. Like you know, they they know it to the T. So like I was blessed to be able to learn it, like learn every position. Uh, it's not as simple as like you would think. Like a regular wing T, our wing T, like there there's a strong side and a weak side. And like, let's say there's a, a quick tackle and then a guard. That's like being like learning to be able to learn the other side would be like learning like a running back and a wide receiver position at a different offense. Mm -hmm. So like, like really, it wasn't honestly it wasn't challenging for me just because like I was motivated to do it. I wanted to get on the field as quick as possible, um, and like that it really showed. And like that that helped in my recruitment also as far as like my versatility in the guard and tackle. Yeah. Do you do you think like you have a true position or like I, again? Thinking about the NFL in the most recent years, think about Micah Parsons, Adafi Owe. I mean, Jordan Stout from last year, for that matter. You know, it, versatility. I feels like the number one factor now in guys that are going to the NFL draft is being able to show not only can I do what I set out to, to start my college career in, but I can also do multiple other things. And I feel like that entices NFL teams to pick you because it's like, man, not only can we put this guy at center guard, we can play him at tackle as well. Do you have a true position that you'd like to play, or do you really like showing off that versatility and kind of doing whatever the team needs you to do? Um, well, like, when you get to NFL, a lot of teams, they travel with seven linemen. So, like, you have to be extremely versatile because there's five, of course, and then you have two subs. Um, at Penn State, there's four. They usually travel 14 guys around there. So, honestly, I feel like I can be – like, I'm. a lot of people say I'm like a prototype uh, guard. I can move. I'm, I can bend a little bit uh, easier than other guys. I'm also not like six six or six eight. I'm six five. So like you know, I have a little bit of a little advantage there. But um, I think I'm long enough. Like my arms are, uh, like you know, with my frame, I think I'll be able to play uh, tackle. Um, I don't mind either one. Like I, I I'm going to enjoy learning um, all of them. Hopefully one day I'll, I'll know all of them, of course. But um, my understanding, Coach uh, Trout Wine, he wants to start off at guard and then we'll move out uh, at tackle or uh, vice versa, depending on how we look and how we see it fit. Yeah, right. You never know what's kind of, when you get to campus what's going to happen as far as the depth on the offensive line, any injuries going in, and then you start at one position versus another. But either way, having that versatility is going to be a huge key and obviously help you grow in so many positions. Um, is there any significance behind the number 74? Is there something that, that – is it your favorite number? Or is it something you know, that's been in your family? What is, uh, is there a reason why you want to wear or you do wear 74? Um, so my, my grandfather wore and my dad wore and my uh, older brother who I played with, I was 73, he was 74. As soon as he left, I took over the number and hopefully I could, I know Olu, uh, Fashanu has it right now. Uh, hopefully I could get it. You know what I mean? If not 70, my old coach's number, you know, I have a whole bunch of numbers in my head and I'm thinking about, so I'm looking to it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. How about the nickname Bam Bam, right? On Twitter, you're Javen Williams Bam Bam or Javen Bam Bam Williams. Where does that come from? Where did you get that nickname, man? Um, So it, was, it started in like eighth grade with my buddies. Uh, I just run around saying I'm the great Bambino because like I wish I could wrestle and like I, I know I could be a really good baseball player. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. saying Babe Ruth, but <laughs> funny name, you know, Bam Bam, run around saying Bam Bam. And now like my personality, I'm not like a serious you know of course there's time to get serious but i'm like a very outgoing person you know i love to make people smile and that name just makes people smile you know bam bam you know it just gives a smile on people's face so i just rock with it that's awesome dude i love that i love that i, I hope it i know it's going to stick and uh, i'm excited to, to hear it in beaver stadium it's going to be awesome 
Um, you talked you talk about baseball, a sport that you, you don't play. You play, you know, you do track and field in the spring, which is super untraditional in my opinion. I feel like most football players, especially offensive linemen or defensive linemen, they play football, they, they wrestle, and then usually they play baseball. But you, you do track and field, uh, shot put and discus. Is there any correlation between the track and field stuff and football, or is it just simply because you love doing it? Is there, you know, I know that's like a big thing to not play just one sport, keep working out those same muscles in your body so you don't tear something or hurt yourself. But is there any uh, anything you take away from track and field that helps you on the football field at all? Oh, yeah. Um, it really started off with my brother. He threw, he was a really good thrower, state champion himself. Um, so I kind of like, you know, want to follow in his footsteps. But then around like sophomore year, it kind of came to a point where like I was really good at track and field and I really didn't have a name out there for football yet. So um, like I would train that summer going into junior year, all I did was train track and field. And like, I didn't think that I could go to college to play football. So that was like my main goal. And, and I really learned a lot of things as far as like mentally, like one-on-one, -on -one, like when you're throwing, you can't like blame a teammate or you can't, you know, it's all on you. You know, if you throw a bad throw or you're out of rhythm, that's on you. And that's like the mental thing I took from it. But like physically, like it's like really footwork, uh, power output, balance. You know, as a lineman, it kind of like if you're a lineman, you should definitely be throwing shot put in discus. I feel like it just goes hand in hand. Gotcha. That's awesome. I never, I've never heard of, uh, I guess I just haven't had a chance to talk to someone who does both. You know, I've, I've known people in high school that, that did track and field, but they usually didn't play football or someone that played football and didn't do track and field. So it's really, it's really interesting to see you do that and obviously very, be very successful at, at both. Um, it, it's really cool. Um, is there anyone in, in the class of 2023 that you've become really good friends with just from official visits and uh, getting to know them a little bit better? Is there someone or a couple of people that you've become pretty good buddies with before you end up heading to Penn state? Right. Um, well, we're like we're on a group chat and like we communicate a whole bunch. So like you know, I feel like we're all like really close. Um, I know Joey; he's like really close to me. So you know, of course he's the PA guy. A bunch of the PA guys, you know, we click. Um, Alex, of course, Alex Birchmeyer, Anthony, Mega, you know, a whole bunch of those guys. You know, I'm really looking forward to playing with them side by side. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, man. I, like last year, you know. Penn State, obviously, seven to five is never great, but you know the offensive line play. Just you know, not all on that the whole year that it just clicked. It felt like sometimes things were out of rhythm or whatever the case may be. Um, and seeing Penn State recruiting that group at such a high level, and obviously with Cooper Cousins in the twenty four class, it right. just feels like the future of the offensive line in general and defensive line are going to be super strong. And I can't wait to see you all, you guys all on the field together because you know me and my friends we talk about. 2024 2025 like that's when I feel like the offensive line play is going to be super super strong and uh, I'm excited to see all you guys out in the field together but um you know the other thing I was I was thinking about kind of once last season ended was the mentality sometimes that offensive line groups seem to have like when they get on the field I whenever I flip on the tape for you or Alex or anybody else that's in the class it feels like you guys have that edge where you're looking to hit somebody. You're not waiting for contact to come to you. You almost establish the line of scrimmage and you have an aggressive style of play without getting penalized. Of course, where does that come from for you personally? Like it's, it seems like every time you guys run the ball or pass the ball, you're looking for someone to hit and you play till the whistle goes. Where does that mentality come from, man? Um, well, my sophomore year, um, there wasn't, a, there was a little bit of that. I showed a lot of athleticism, but um, one of my big keys coming to my junior year was being tenacious, like getting after the ball. Um, that was a whole bunch of keys that my coaches would put on me, and that's like a, another thing with track and field. Like, you know, um, I had to do a lot of mobility stuff just because you know you want to be a little loose and you don't want to be too stiff when you throw. So I think that helped a lot as far as like getting on the outside of pools and and being able to run and keep up with the running backs. Um, like the way our, our offense works, our guards pull every single play. Uh, it's just simple. But um, like being able to do that every single play and, and like, you know, running like as far as like out, like in space, not only trapping, but I run out a lot on like counter sweep and stuff like that. So that showed a whole bunch of athleticism also. Yeah, it feels like in your offense, your high school offense, that is, you have to be in, in incredible shape because you're doing so much pulling and stuff like that. Do you have to do you, I, I guess I should say, is your conditioning a little bit different, do you think, than other high school athletes are going through? Uh, Yeah, um, we we have a tradition at Wine Missing, uh, 40-40s, and then, like, we have to run a mile uh, in, like, a mile. Like, I have to run six laps, so, like, a mile and a half in 12 minutes. So, like, they 
kind of keep that on, on us. Uh, I'd say our offense is like our offensive line does a great job of like communicating, like, you know, getting after it together. Uh, and like we, we run a lot as a team. So like I'm not you never get used to conditioning, but, you know, you kind of have to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, is there anything that you want to improve on? Like, again, you're the number one player in Pennsylvania. So you start thinking about, you know, what do you have to improve on? But is there anything that you personally are trying to improve on? I know you said you talked about your your team goals kind of going into the season. But personally, is there anything that you're honestly looking to get better at, you know, just from this season of football that's coming up for you? Um. Yeah, definitely. There's always small things to work on. Um. This year I'm kind of, you know, I have uh, – you know, a little name on my back. So there's definitely guys that will be coming out for me. So I, be, I think being able to handle that and uh, being able to handle the uh, the tension without, you know, getting too much of a big head, that's going to be a big thing I, I will definitely work on. Just because, you know, when you get to the NFL and college, you're, you're not really that, that guy anymore as far as, like, coming in as a freshman. So uh, I'm going to take advantage of my senior year, uh, work on footwork and, and stuff like that, and just have a great year. That's the goal. That's awesome, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to see, obviously, what happens to you on the field this year. Can't wait to see you at Penn State as well. Um, I'm going to end it with, with one question, if you if you don't mind, is uh, what do you think about, you know, Penn State, since you won't be there this year, what do you think about their chances of uh, being successful? Do you have a record prediction, or do you think that they're going to do well this year? I think they're going to do amazing. Um, how many games? They have 10 games? How many? Games? I think it's 12, I believe. 12 games, so I think they go – if I'm going to be honest, eight and four. Eight and four. Uh, that sounds good, man. Yeah, it's better. It's better than last year, right? It's just small right. improvements. That's all we're looking for. It's it's hard because you know, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, they're all like very successful seasons. And then during COVID, and then last season, it just from a from a fan's perspective, you're like suddenly you get used to getting into the the big New Year's Day bowl games or being in the college football playoff all the time or in the conversation, I should say. Um, so the last two years have been difficult. Eight and four is, is definitely a very fair prediction. And I think that's a very uh, reasonable prediction. Do you have any, is there any games that you know that you're going to so far this year or not yet? Oh, I'll definitely be at the whiteout. I'll definitely yeah, for I'll sure, man, up. for sure. That's awesome. Um, I, I obviously uh, hope everything goes well. Thank you for, uh, thank you for taking the time to, to talk to me, man. Um, it's been really nice to get to know you and uh, obviously good luck this season. I'm wishing you all, all the health and success going into your senior year. And I cannot wait to see you at Penn State, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.